We are seizing this moment to remember our sisters, mm -hmm. brothers, fathers, cousins, sons, daughters, who came before us <laughs> and fought this battle before us and are no longer with us physically, but we know they're here spiritually. What you're here as a part of is the Call My Name panel making workshop for the AIDS Memorial Quilt. And the reason why we call it the Call My Name workshop is because African Americans call the names of their dead. This is what we do. And we need to call the names of our own to promote the healing in our own community. The workshop that was in Washington, D.C. was at the Women's Collective, which is an aid service organization specifically designed for women um, who are infected and affected by HIV and AIDS. Women do get infected with HIV. Women are still dying disproportionately with this disease compared to men. It was when I learned that one in 36 African American women in Washington, D.C. are infected with HIV. It's beyond a state of emergency. You know, those numbers are worse than some um, sub-Saharan African nations. But that workshop in particular um, kind of brought that to life, that there is a specific group of people who are being adversely affected by the pandemic in a way that um, I don't think the larger community is fully aware of. You know, in the past 30 years, people have gotten a little bit lax. They think, okay, we've got medication, it's okay, you know. So people look at it and think, oh, it's fine. No. And we're gonna, we're not gonna um, put up with that behavior when you can be educated on how the disease is spread, what you need to do to take care of yourself, no drugging, no drinking, take your medicine, eat right. I've always loved the AIDS quilt. You know, the idea that they were, it was a quilt that was also a living memorial to people who had died of HIV and AIDS. I was always fascinated by that, and especially some of the beauty and the creativity of the quilts, and I had worked on a few quilts for friends that I had lost to the disease. But in speaking with um, Jada, who works, you know, with the AIDS quilt, we were talking about how long it was. It's over 50 miles long. Then we were talking about the prevalence of the disease in the community of color. Pick a color. Okay, black. And I asked how many quilts were there for people of color, black people. And when she told me less than half a mile, I was like, okay, I know that we've got a lot of work to do, but now we really have a lot of work to do. We didn't see our faces on the quilt. As women, as women of color, as black women, um, we, were, we were invisible. We didn't um, see ourselves. I've been to the quilt on the mall for many, many years, including the last time it was on the mall. They walked away in protest because they were not represented on the quilt and they did not think that there was a place for them. And we put our heads together around pushing Call My Name. You know, there's an old Negro spiritual that says, hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, if somebody's calling my name, I never go away. I'm always remembered. So how could we empower, encourage black folks to get involved, to raise up the names of their family, their friends, their mothers, their fathers, their children who have passed away to this disease in a way that could live forever? We love our brothers, we're happy, we learned a lot from them, mm -hmm. but we also want to see the visibility of us. And I am happy to see that we're gonna work on quilts today so that we can infiltrate the big quilt. We are not the educators, but we have an educational tool. So we're able to actually put a face on the numbers. So I can take my experience, however it is, and talk to people and show people by my actions of how you can stand up if you're educated. And we're hoping that on a purely humane level that if that information is out there then it will begin to uh, change the tide of uh, understanding and feeling around the um, stigma and shame that has come with 
living with the disease, having it, and having it affect, you know, a community. When you hear the stories that are connected to these quilts, maybe people will be moved in their heart and mind about what they think or don't think about this disease. Mm -hmm. That's why this is important. These are living memorials. When you look at a panel of quilt, you're able to see something very important about someone's life, where they came from, what their interests were, what their hobbies were, who they loved, um, what their profession was. You can see all that on a panel of quilt. And so this, to me, this quilt has energy. I recognize my calling. And it's wonderful to know that I've lived all these years with this, with this virus, and I'm able to sit here now to inspire others. Uh, it takes strength and courage, and I'm so happy. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've never heard anyone or possibly say that they are happy that they got the virus. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, and I feel it. You know, sometimes those stitches are like tears for people. You know, finally they're able to lay it out and say, this, this was my daughter, or this was my brother, or this, this is my lover, or this was my friend. Well, the quilt is going to tell people, look, these are women. We've been here all the long. This is us. We're not hiding. And I hope the quilt bring people out to say, hey, one, if we can get one person to look at this quilt and say, hey, I'm going to get some help. I'm going to talk to my children. I'm going to talk to family members at these gatherings or friends that we're not going to pass them paper plates and forks and, and set them apart from us because we're all human. That's how personal it is to me. I'm up. And I could be a woman who pass on, you know, one day, because that's the cycle of life, okay? And that if I'm here doing this for someone else that had passed, then maybe there'll be someone that, that'll be here doing it for me. I guess you call that paying forward or something. Yeah, okay.